video, I'm going to tell you about a free resource that if you use a PC or a Windows PC instead of a Mac, this is just a, a very valuable free resource that you need to know about. And it's called Portable Apps. Go to portableapps.com and they have dozens of really good quality ones, but then I, I think there are over a, a hundred, maybe a couple of hundred different little applications that you can either download to your PC or to a pen drive. And you can run these applications from a pen drive without having to install them. The standard for a portable app is it, it has to be free, open source. It can't leave a trace. So it's not supposed to leave a trace. So you can run these programs on a computer in a library or on a friend's computer or on a computer in a computer lab at a university or a high school. And they don't require administrator privileges in order to run. And they don't leave any trace that you ever ran them so people can't complain that you ran these applications on that computer. So if you're interested, I'm just going to show you really quickly here the process. It's not very hard. There are a couple of ways to do it. You can either download what's called the Portable Apps Platform. And if you click right here, that's, that's what you're going to download. Or you can download these applications individually. The difference is the Portable Apps Platform, if you run that first, it gives you a little menu that lists all your portable apps and has a few other little features in it. But the simple way is just to download these applications by themselves and tell it to install it to a directory on your pen drive or on the desktop of your computer, wherever you want, and you're done. Now just so the Mac people don't feel left out, there is not exactly the same thing for Mac, but if you want to know of some portable apps that are for Macintosh, it's not nearly as good, go to lifehacker.com and search for portable apps for Mac OS X. Again, this is, this is not nearly as good, but I don't do Macs, so you're very much on your own there. So if you download this portable apps platform and you run it, let me just show you what happens here. So it tells me I need to select a language, English. It tells me I have to select next. I have to agree to some conditions. And I want to do a new install. It has already found that I have this pen drive inserted into my computer here. Or you could do a custom location. So you could just install this folder with all these apps on it and this little platform on the desktop of your computer. And then you can just double click the icon to run the platform, or I'll show you more about that in just a minute. So I'm going to let this install and then I'll come back and talk about what's going on after it gets done. Okay, so Portable Apps has done its thing and now uh, it, it says run Portable Apps platform. So let's leave that checkbox and let's click finish. Now a window comes up and it it's on my, I have two screens. So on my other screen, it has a little window up that I can't move that says portable apps, checking for apps. And then this is just some little information. They're asking for donations. Of course, if you find this useful, please donate to them. So this is important. Eventually this window comes up and this is a little checkbox system where you can choose which apps you want it to install at the beginning. You can always add more, more apps later. But it's great because it's got the name of the app and then over here it has a little description. Let me show you a few of the ones that I find personally really useful. I like this one, Balabolka. It'll take any text file and it'll read it out loud. So if you have a Word document or if you have an Adobe file where you can copy the text out and paste it, then this will read it to you. It's useful. Sometimes you get tired of reading and you want somebody to read something to you. So I like Balabolka. Other things that are useful sometimes is this on-screen keyboard. So if all of a sudden your keyboard dies on you and you need something that you can use to click on the mouse, that's a good one to have. Again, these, you know, all of these things are optional. I'm just telling you some of the ones I've found to be useful. On-screen keyboard, not too bad. Another one is Composer. If you ever have any need to edit HTML, this is a very simple HTML editor. Good to have. Notepad++ is great. It's a uh, just a text editor, but it's a lot better than regular old Notepad that comes with Windows. So I use Notepad++ quite often. Let's see what else looks really good here that I use from time to time. Celestia is kind of fun, but definitely it's just, it's just a toy, but it, it's a scientific toy. It can show you what the stars in the sky are going to look like 
at any moment in time. You can put in any day, any time, you can, and then you can put yourself on Earth, and you can look up at the sky. You can also fly around the universe, just for fun. It's got a dictionary, it's got a mapping program, a basic mapping pro program here, Marble, Typing Tutor, these are games. Uh, there's an interesting chess player you can do, or Sudoku, Sudokus if you're interested in that. For graphics and pictures, GIMP is a great photo editor. It's kind of high tech. It's not very easy to use, but it's, it's really good. It'll do anything. Inkscape is a great drawing program for uh, drawing uh, scalable vector graphics files. Uh, picture files, Infram View, JPEG View are okay here. If you want to be able to edit pictures you've taken with a camera in an easy way, Photo Filter is good here. PicPic is a very nice utility. It will it helps you very easily take little pic, little parts of your screen. Like if I wanted to just take a little image of this window right here and save it, PicPic you can do it in one second, and then you can edit that. You can add some text. So PicPic very nice program to have. FileZilla is good if you need to transfer programs, uh, FTP program basically, Kitty if you need a terminal program, most people don't need these things. Uh, there's Firefox Portable, actually Firefox Portable isn't listed here, uh, there's, there's Opera Portable. There's some, some apps that you can add that aren't in this startup list here. Uh, Putty is another terminal program, Skype Portable is a good one if you use Skype. In terms of music players, video players, Cool Player is decent for playing MP3s. Audacity is a great program for recording music, recording vocals, recording guitar, combining them. Nice little program. VLC is a great program that will play just about any audio file and play just about any video file that you ever download. Or if you have it on, a, on some kind of camera that has some kind of weird video file, VLC will probably play it with no problem. Okay, Office kind of files. If you just want a little Microsoft Word kind of clone, ABI Word is okay. But if you want the whole suite of Office things, I recommend LibreOffice. LibreOffice means free office. There's also uh, probably a version of OpenOffice you can install. I personally use LibreOffice. They're based on basically the same source code. But LibreOffice is great because it has a Microsoft Word kind of clone, Excel clone, um, PowerPoint, database, all that kind of stuff. Very valuable to have on a pen drive at all times. Sumatra PDF, if you want a PDF reader, Sumatra PDF is a really good one to have. So also there are some antivirus programs. So if you have a laptop that says it has a virus, but you can't actually get in to use it or install a program because of the virus, you can plug in a pen drive that has some virus, antivirus programs on there, and you can use that to check. Good things to have. Another thing you want is 7-Zip. So 7-Zip will make zip files and extract, extract zip files. So anytime you download something that's zipped, 7-Zip is a little bit better, easier way to uh, unzip and zip files than just using what's built into Windows in my experience. Lots of other little utility programs here. So I'm just going to install these. And so I'll just click next for what I have here. And then it's going to download and install all these programs every once in a while you'll have to click OK and I'm gonna pause it here and come back once they're installed and show you a couple other little tips and tricks alright so it looks like it is done downloading install and installing those apps so let's close this and now when you click on this little portable apps application that's open we have a list of our little apps that we told it to download here and there are two ways you can open these apps once you have downloaded them. You can use this little portable app platform if you want, and you just click on these names. Say we want to do LibreOffice Calc. That's like their spreadsheet. And these applications do open a little more slowly since they're running on a pen drive than they would if they were installed on the hard drive of a computer. And here we go, LibreOffice Calc. Now, another way you can open these, let me go ahead and close that. Let's open up our portable apps application here and let's close it. Now another way you can open these portable apps is by going to the pen drive directly.
And on your pen drive, you're going to have a little folder called Portable Apps. Here's a little start menu, this little curved arrow. This is the Portable Apps application. Now you can double click that at any time on your pen drive or USB stick, whatever you want to call them. And that will open that little application we were just looking at. Or you can just double click on your portable apps folder that has all the actual programs that were downloaded and if you want to use one of them say GIMP portable you can just open up that application folder and click the EXE or application version and that's a more straightforward way to do it if you aren't really interested in using the portable apps platform I personally don't use that portable apps platform all that much it does seem to have some interesting features when you're using a por portable app it will automatically look in the documents folder on your pen drive for documents and some other things but again I haven't used it enough to really know all of the pluses and minuses of using that but the big point to me is that you have these great applications that are free don't have viruses open source and whether you want to burn a CD rip a CD to MP3 files, edit a picture, these apps are there for you. It's also great just to have a pen drive to be able to do all these things without having to install an application onto a computer, especially if you're borrowing someone else's computer. I'm going to end this video here. Check out the portable apps. Let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite portable app that you think I haven't heard of. So that's it for today. This is Berkey Academy signing out. I hope these portable apps help you have a more productive day.